No pain, no gain. Quite literally in this case, today we're going to be taking a look at Hu Tao, a character way far off in the future that this guide might not even be completely close to what the actual release may be. It's probably going to be a couple more banners before she actually releases. This is all subject to change, so a lot of it actually might get changed, but based on what we have now, I did want to cover it. I might make another character review later on in the future if it's such a drastic change. If it's not too much of a change, I might just put it in the description. But as for now, this is what we know. Again, all the information is from Honey Impact. Go ahead and give them credit. We're going to be taking a look at a level 80 Hutel, town level 6. Without further ado, let's get right into it. First off, we have the base stats, base HP of 13721, which is currently the best HP in the game. Attack at 94, which is the worst attack in the game. And 773, which is the second best defense stat. I have this all laid out for you guys. I went ahead and put every character and their stats into a spreadsheet just so we can get some comparison. Here you guys can compare your favorite characters with Hu Tao. We have max HP, attack stat, and defense. As for ascension and talents, we have the Pyro Red's Fine drops, Juvenile Jade, which I'm assuming is going to be the new item that's going to come out, so currently this is unavailable. Silk Flowers, Nectar, Teaching of Diligence, and Shard of the Foul Legacy. And of course, we have the Crown Sage if you want to get anything to level 10. Hu Tao's extra added stat is crit damage, so you're going to get that 78.8% increased crit damage at level 80. So no other stat here. Next up, we have the skills. Hu Tao's normal attack has a 6 strike with 64, 66, 83, 90. Two attacks on the 5th one, 45 and 48, and 118, which this is actually really, really high. So building a normal attack would not be a bad idea. Now, I know you might be thinking, why would you want to build normal attack? She literally has the worst attack stat. We're going to get to it. Don't worry. Next, we have Guide to the Afterlife. Now, this is where things get a little different. 16 second cooldown. When you press it, you enter a Paramita Papilio state consuming 30% of your max HP upon activation in the last 9 seconds. During the state, you get increased attack based on max HP, 5%, and it cannot exceed 300% of your attack stat. Damage is converted to pyro, and charge attacks apply a blood blossom. Blood blossoms are pretty much a pyro damage DOT, and it lasts 8 seconds. So this kind of reminds me more of like child stance change. You pretty much activate it, you have a certain set duration, and then you have a certain cooldown. But the difference is with child, the longer you're in that stance, the longer the cooldown is. This one is just a set duration and a set cooldown. Now what's really good about this stance is that it is based on your max HP. Now if you build your max HP as high as you possibly can, the highest you could possibly go is three times your attack stat. So you want to build at least a little bit of attack stat. What you should think in mind is have a certain attack stat in mind. Let's just say a thousand. Your attack stat is a thousand. It's pretty low. But if you multiply that by three, you can get a max up to three thousand. But again, the increase is based on your max HP. So you want to build that. Then we have the pyro damage conversion and the blood blossom DLT. So this is pretty much what you want to have every time you want to be on the field. Because without it, you're pretty much going to do nothing. With that 94 main stat is terrible. Not good. Not good. So you want to make sure you have that HP bonus to convert into attack so you're out, you're doing some damage. So this is like your main DPS type ability. In this case, you cannot use the skill unless she's out on the field. So yeah, she would be seen as a main DPS. You can tell me otherwise, but there's no situation where you can use this as support or utility. This is like you have to be on the field in order to use this. Next up, we have Spirit Soother. 15 second cooldown, 60 energy cost, so fairly average. Command a spirit to attack, dealing large AoE pyro damage, 400%. That's fat, fat damage. Enemies hit, regenerate percent of max HP up to 5 times, 8% of your max HP. And when your HP is below 50%, damage and healing is increased. So your damage is increased by an extra 100% and you get an extra 3% of your max HP. So this is like your healing move. Once you use your 30%, let's just say you don't have a healing. You use that 30%, lose health, you take some damage, pop the ult, hit some enemies, get that HP regeneration up to like 40-ish percent of your max HP. Pretty much you're gonna be making back all the damage you lost using your ult. But again, this is some really, really high damage. 500%, 400%. So with Hu Tao and her skills, it's kind of iffy. You wanna build a little bit of attack as well as building a lot of HP. Next we have the passives and constellations. First passive, the more the merrier. 18% chance to receive a suspicious dish. Uh, we still have no info on this. Maybe it might do a bigger effect or a random effect, who knows. All we can do is speculate. Chrysalis stage, crit rate plus 12% for 8 seconds after Paramita Papilio duration is over. So once you're out of that state, then you get extra crit rate. Blood boil, pyro damage plus 25% when your HP is below 50. As for constellations, we have Crimson Bouquet. 
Charge attacks do not consume stamina during Paramita Papilio. Spamming your charge attack is always really good. She has the lunge charge attack. I think it's like Zhang Ling's. It's going to be doing 180%. If you really wanted to pull a C1, it would definitely help out in your combos and your rotations when it comes to using her normal attack. Next up, we have Bad Omen. Basically, your Blood Blossom damage is increased by 4% of your max HP, and your ultimate now applies it as well. Of course, we have 3 and 5, which increases the skill in the Elemental Burst. Next up, we have Garden of Eternal Rest. Your crit rate is increased by 12% for the entire party, except for Hu Tao, after defeating an enemy affected by Blood Blossom. This one's pretty straightforward. You get crit rate after you kill somebody with it. And last but not least, we have Butterflies Embrace. Elemental damage and physical resistance increased by 200%. Crit rate is increased by 100% for 10 seconds when HP is below 25% or you take lethal damage once every 60 seconds. So this is like your one-shot protection. This is when you're about to die, it's like, oop, gotta go in panic mode, gotta bunker up, do more damage, take less damage, pop your healing stuff, you know, this is your emergency thing. So, is it C6 worthy? I mean, eh, it's good. It's a good emergency thing. I think you'd get the same effect from Barbara's Revive. They pretty much do the same thing, the only difference is this one is going to cost you a couple thousand dollars <laughs> to get. But I mean, the increased crit rate is always pretty good. I don't see anybody using this in a regular rotation, I think this is more of like an emergency tool. But I mean, if you could, find a way to always hit that 25% threshold, because this is once every 60 seconds. Unlike Barbara's, it's like a couple minutes, so you could use this as a DPS rotation, just find a way to just eat hits, so you get that guaranteed crit rate, get that increased pyro damage, and you also get that uh, increased damage on your ultimate so you can get pretty creative with this find ways to beat yourself up to do more damage <laughs> so pretty good pretty good uh, it's up to you to decide whether or not this is worth it depends on how much you're going to use it and lastly we have our weapons and artifact builds now the first one we obviously have to go with her signature weapon staff of homa this is crit damage increase your hp by 20 percent attack bonus by 0.0 8% of your max HP. When your HP is below 50%, your attack bonus is increased by 1% of your max HP. Pretty much like her elemental skill state, you get increased damage based on your max HP. This is always good and you get even more HP. So, I mean, I mean, it's a signature weapon. You can't really go wrong with it. Next up, we have Primordial Jade Spear. We have the crit rate, increased attack every time you hit, and then you get 12% increased damage when you have your max stack. So, this one is just another good option if you don't summon this one. Next up we have Deathmatch which is the battle pass weapon. Has crit rate, attack and defense plus 16% when there's two enemies nearby. Attack is increased by 24% when there's less than two enemies nearby. So again, these do increase attack, not HP, but I mean in the end it doesn't matter. They're, they both have the same intent, increasing your damage. This one I think is also pretty good because it has that increased defense just in case. And lastly we have White Tassel, which this is crit rate and increases your normal attack by 24%. This is at refinement 1. You could get up to 48 at refinement 5, so if you pull her and you're low level, this is not a bad option. This would probably be really good up until you get one of these three. Now, artifact sets, this is a no-brainer. Crimson Witch of the Flames, 15% increased pyro damage, and increase that vaporize, melt, overload, and burning damage. Honestly, just run a four-piece Crimson Witch Flames. There's no reason to get any of the other ones unless you have better rolls on them. Lava Walker, this should be lower on the list. I just wanted to be a little more organized, but Lava Walker is eh, but the pyro damage is pretty good. 35% increase. Pyro resistance, pretty much useless. There's no reason to have the pyro resistance. Noblest Gladiator, these ones are pretty general ones. Increase your ultimate damage, increase your attack, attack, normal attack. You know, these are just ones that you can use until you get a good Crimson Witch of Flame set. And for our four star set, we have Martial Artist again, because normal attack increases. Always oh, pretty good. As for main stats and substats, we have HP percent. Pyro damage bonus, crit damage, crit rate, crit damage, HP, energy recharge, or attack percent. These ones are pretty straightforward. The reason why I put HP percent here is so that you can get more out of the heal and more out of the attack stat bonus. Pretty good. That's Hu Tao for you. Has some really good multipliers. Her kit's really interesting, similar to Child, but a little different. Honestly, I'm pretty excited for her. I can't wait till she comes out to see what happens. In conclusion, Hu Tao is a little complicated, but at the same time, pretty easy to understand. The way she works is that she sacrificed 30% of her life to do a bunch of buffs like attack stat increases, pyro damage, DOTs, and depending on how low her HP, she gets better buffs, like increased healing on her ult, increased damage on her ult. The only complicated factor with Hu Tao is balancing out a good ratio with attack and HP. So I made a quick little chart for you guys to screenshot if you don't really understand how it works, the left is going to be your attack stat. So let's just say your attack stat is 1000, then the highest attack bonus you could possibly get is 3000. 3000 is 5% of your max HP, 
then your max HP would need to be 60,000. So that's why you should probably build really high HP. Let's just say your attack status is as low as 700. The bonus increase you can get is 2100 so you want your max hp to be 42,000. so feel free to screenshot this this is why you don't really need to build attack on hutao because even as low as these are you still need to have a pretty high hp pool to even get the max amount don't worry too much about building attack in the end building higher attack will just make the amount needed be higher sure you'll have more potential but you're not going to get 144,000 HP. Might as well find a middle ground. I'd say 900 is probably an ideal amount, 52,000 HP. We'll see how the stats work out. We still don't know how it's all gonna roll out. They might change the numbers. So yeah, Hu Tao, very nice character. A bit to understand, but in the end, very good option pick. I think I'm gonna wail on her. Seems like a really, really nice character to have. Just imagine having Child and Hu Tao on a team, and then you do it like SAO style. You do Oh, we go child, press your E, get your sword stance, and then you switch to Hu Tao, and then use your little pyro stance, and then until that runs out, you switch, and then just go back and forth. Probably not the best or ideal option, but it would be some fun to play around with. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Remember, Hu Tao is not going to be released for a while, so take all of this with a grain of salt. Even Ganyu. Ganyu's coming up soon, and they already changed her cryo damage bonus to crit damage, so... Again, anything can change at any given time. This is just what we know now. And I just want to inform you guys of what she's capable of doing. So, yeah, enough blabbering. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.